interested to hear your thoughts on this. What's Phil Jackson thinking? Who the hell knows? <laughs> Nobody knows what Phil Jackson is thinking right now. One minute he's committed to the triangle. Uh, another minute, uh, you know, that doesn't appear to be the case. Uh, with all, a bunch of qualified coaches out there, he seemed to be fixated on Kurt Rambis. Then all of a sudden we're hearing now that he loved Jeff Hornacek because he always respected Jerry Sloan, the former great coach for the Utah Jazz, who Jeff Hornacek played under and went to two NBA finals with, with John Stockton and Carl Malone. Uh, Jeff Hornacek, no doubt, can coach. His first year in Phoenix, he won 48 games when everybody expected him to be in the lottery. But after that, uh, a disintegration began taking place before our very eyes, and not just in terms of wins and losses, but in terms of acrimony that existed internally. Uh, players feuding with one another, players feuding with the coaching staff, public disagreements with ownership and the vision of the executives for the Phoenix Suns. It just seemed to be a bit chaotic and haphazard, to say the least. And so bringing in Jeff Hornacek is not something for me to get excited about. I don't want to excoriate or cast aspersions on him uh, because there are hiccups in everybody's life, and that may have very well been a hiccup for him. But what I will say is that it's not consistent in any way with what we've come to know, believe, um, uh, and believe of Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson was supposed to be fixated on a triangle. Well, it's nice to know that you're not fixated on a triangle. But if you're not fixated on a triangle and you're, would and you're willing to venture out beyond that, well, what happened to Tom Thibodeau? What happened to Jeff Van Gundy? What happened to Mark Jackson, former Rookie of the Year for the New York Knicks, raised in Queens, New York, played at O'Connell Park all the time before going to St. John's University? Uh, and starring there and being a, uh, being a reserve there for the team that went to the Final Four with Chris Mullen and the crew. What happened to that? Because he certainly had more qualifications in terms of record and, 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 and production than Jeff Hornacek. And so when you look at it from that perspective, again, yet the latest move that has me very unenamored uh, by what Phil Jackson has done, uh, but at the same time, uh, it is what it is. I'm, uh, I'm upset about it, not, not flagrantly so to the point where I'm like, Lord, let, let, let's protest. Again, Jeff Hornacek does have potential. But I look at Phil Jackson, and I'm just scratching my head. I don't understand this one, but I don't understand much of what he has done right now. I'll tell you what I do understand. I understand that his primary responsibility, being a guy that's getting paid about six times more than anybody else having the same position in the NBA, his primary responsibility is supposed to be able to recruit, to go out there and to get marquee free agents to want to come to the attractive mosaic known as New York City. Phil Jackson is yet to do that. And as far as I'm concerned, until he does that, he has left Carmelo Anthony hanging. And that is the blasphemy in all of this. Hmm. So is it fair to characterize <clears throat> this move left you a little nonplussed, deflated, a little flat, like it's just... Yeah. A little flat. A little okay. flat. Yeah. 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 Better than Kurt Rambis by default, maybe? Is, is, is that by fair default. to say? Yeah. Yeah. I'm with you on this, except in the end, and I don't know this, I'm, I'm, I'm asking the question from a distance, this smacks of not Phil Jackson's decision. Is it possible James Dolan overruled here and said we cannot keep Kurt Rambis here, even for PR reasons? I'm sorry, Phil, we can't do this. You have to go find somebody outside your family tree, not a Phil guy, somebody who doesn't know the triangle that at least we can sell in some ways as, as a new era to our fan base. Is that possible he did that? Well, well, well here's what I think is possible that he told Phil, not Rambis. But I don't think he said, Phil, take Hornacek. I don't think he did that. I think he said, not Rambis, but somebody else. You can't just be married to the triangle and give us a dude that was 100 games under 500 you as a head coach before we gave him this job, and then he went 9 and 19. I'm just saying, Skip, Thibodeau was an ass a former assistant with the New York Knicks. Yep. Jeff Van Gundy was, was, was a former coach with the New York Knicks that took mm -hmm. them to the finals. And Mark Jackson yep. is a native New Yorker who everybody believes I'm with should you. have another shot to be I a head coach you. in the NBA. Yep. Those are three choices right there, and Phil picked none of them. Okay. So Phil starts out with an ex-player of his who knows the triangle, who had never coached a, a dribble, and Derek Fisher, obviously. So he goes that direction, then he goes the Kurt Rambis direction. I, by the way, I like Kurt a lot. I, 
I think he's a really good guy, and I so think he's I. a good basketball so I. man. I, I can't vouch for him. I, I can't defend the record, but I think he got a raw deal in Minnesota, but that's beside this point. This point is, it feels to me like there was a mandate from above, you cannot do that. You cannot keep the interim coach, Kurt Rambis. We can't sell that. We can't defend it as a franchise. So Phil went out and, and hired a guy, not from his tree, but, but a guy in Jeff Hornacek, not, not that he's a pushover, but, but Stephen A., have you been around Jeff a little bit enough? No, he's a really nice guy. I, I think he will do what Phil wants him to do for the most part. I think he will be grateful to have this second chance after he was unceremoniously dismissed mid-year at Phoenix. And by the way, I thought the Phoenix was a raw deal for Jeff Hornacek. I don't know if you followed that closely, but remember that first year in Phoenix? Hornacek won 48 games and almost made the Western Conference playoffs that were loaded all the way to the eighth seed. And I loved watching that team. Now it was more offense than defense, but then he got victimized by a management that let go. Remember all the players? They had Isaiah Thomas, they had Dragic, they had Gortat. I can go on. They, they had, remember the, the Morris twins are there yeah. and he, he let, he trades Marcus to Detroit and then Marquise no went question. crazy. They, they, they sabotaged he split us No up. question. Yeah, I mean, they, he just got done in. He got sabotaged by management there, and, and it just disintegrated last year, and he gets fired midway through his third year. Okay, well, I, I think he's a pretty good coach. I also think he's a really good dude, so Phil thinks he can still keep him somewhat under thumb because all those other guys are their own men. You tell me. I know Mark Jackson a little bit. I know him enough to know he is his own man. Maybe as much his own man as anybody around this league. So he is going to do it his way, or he'll you take the highway, right? Well, I don't think Phil wanted that. Jeff Van Gundy, I love him on television. He's he's the best, but but he he's going to run his ship the way he wants to run it. I don't think he could work for Phil. I could be wrong. Maybe and Tom he could. Th and Tom Thibodeau certainly yeah. will too. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So so Jeff Hornacek. Nice guy, you know, bring him in. He has some qualifications. At least he was a head coach. And he'll kind of do Phil's bidding. I don't even know how long Phil's going to last. Is he going to be there one more year? You tell the me. Anticipation, the anticipation yeah. is that he's leaving after next season uh, when he can get out of his deal and still get some of his money and go back to L.A. Me personally, listen, I, first of all, I want to say a couple of things. Number one, no knock against Kurt Rambis. He's a basketball guy. Yep. He's very knowledgeable. It's just that it's New York, and with all the suffering this city has been subjected to, you got to have somebody who is established who you believe in, okay? And Kurt Rambis is not it. When we see Kurt Rambis, we see a Laker. That's just a reality. And we see a guy that has a less than mediocre record as a head coach. That's not going to tickle anybody, okay? Yeah. When you look at a Jeff Hornacek, yeah, okay, a Phil guy, nothing to be excited about, et cetera, et cetera. Those other candidates, New Yorkers would have been excited about to some degree, particularly Tom Thibodeau or Mark Jackson. Phil Jackson wasn't even interested in any of them. And so when you look at it and you then you, said, then you say, damn, you know, he drafted Christus Porzingis, good enough, that's fair. But what else have you done? I mean, who did you get here? And why did you give us Derek Fisher to begin with, knowing the man never coached a day in his life? <laughs> you know, you just sit up there and you just scratch your head, and I, I, I don't know what to say about Phil. Now, I'm trying to be respectful, but my God. And then let me tell you something right now. I've known Melo for 13 years. Melo does not come out and say the things that he said. Skip, Melo went on the record. We need to widen our search for a coach. He didn't want to hear no junk about, oh, it's, it's Kurt Rambis. Well, we're going to get him. Melo didn't want to hear that. He said, why didn't the search as a coach? There's something about Melo where he feels Phil hasn't lived up to expectations. What he told him he would do. Yeah. And that needs to be said. It just does. Well, if I'm a Knicks fan at this moment, I can't, yeah. hate, I can't hate this hiring. But I I'm definitely not can't it. love it. It's I'm not hating it. There's, no, there's nothing that's going to make me go to the box office and say, wow, I got to get me a Knicks ticket. 
a change is coming. I, I don't, there's nothing about this that tells me that. And Phil could blame the media all he wants to and, you know, blame the negativity or whatever. Phil assists that big time because Phil hasn't done what he's supposed to do. Phil needs to go out there and recruit. He sold us. That's why he supposedly hired Derek Fisher. Derek Fisher was hired, Skip, because he was supposed to be the guy that was going to lure Durant from Oklahoma City. <laughs> well, you fired Derek Fisher. Yeah. So now where are you going? Who the hell is who the hell is Jeff Hornacek going to give us? Eric Bledsoe? Yeah. Not that he can't play because he can play, but come on now. Yeah. I mean, I, even though the Knicks could use Eric Bledsoe, uh, by I know, the way, they really could well, use him. Bledsoe's but you know had what I'm so saying. many knee issues. Like he's, it's, I know. It's, oh, it's just one thing after another. Okay, I'll give you one last silver lining. Jeff Hornacek, who twice won the NBA's three-point shootout, very good three-point shooter. I will bet you Porzingis doubles or triples his three-point attempts next year. I think the, the, the tall kid's going to be out on the three-point line more and more because Phoenix did that a lot. They're, they're going to have their Channing Fry, you know, big shooting threes. I think you'll see more of that. I think it'll be more fun to watch. I'm just, I'm just Plus trying to help full. you. There to be yeah. out, something to be optimistic yeah. about. Right. Listen, I, I appreciate that. I mean, clearly, when it comes to my Knicks, I'm emotional and I'm far from objective. I'm very, very disgusted um, because I think that Phil Jackson, uh, you know, when you when you hire a novice as a head coach, you know, uh, no disrespect to Derek Fisher, but he never coached in his life. I just think that Phil just thinks he's above the fray. I mean, he gives new meaning to the word arrogance. And, you know, I'm just hoping that he gets it right. Because we all know he's going to leave for L.A. I mean, hell, he's doing interviews from L.A., for crying out loud. Mm -hmm. By the way, the pre-draft camp in Chicago, you know, took place the other day, Moody Bible Institute. You know, I wasn't there, but I, I, I asked if Phil was there. A bunch of people said, we didn't see him. So, you know, it's just amazing to me, man. I mean, he's got the best job in America. He gets paid, and nobody knows what he does. He reminds me about, about the character Tommy from the hit comedy show Martin Skip. He had a job, but nobody knew what the hell it was. <laughs> That's Phil Jackson. We don't know what he does. We just don't know. All right, we'll leave it there. Steven, a little emotional on this one. Skip, I think you might be on this next subject as an RG3 supporter. Mm -hmm. supporter. Speaking of coaches, his uh, former coach, Mike Shanahan, speaking ag out against the quarterback in an interesting piece on the undefeated.com. We'll let you know what Shanahan said and react to it when we come back.